If I were to start on Instagram in 2023 from scratch, this is exactly what I would do. I'm gonna tell you, that's what this video is. I'm Phil Palin, a brand strategist. Welcome to my channel where I promise practical advice to build your brand. Today, I am imagining starting over on Instagram from the very beginning. My first post, that is embarrassing. But the truth is that we have access to so many incredible features and tools inside Instagram and out. One of those tools that you often hear me talk about on this channel is Adobe Express, which I'm a proud ambassador for. They're my sponsor for today's video, and they are going to help me and you succeed on Instagram from the very beginning. Let's dive right in. And our dive will begin here, understanding how the algorithm works. I'm gonna move fast because I don't wanna bore you, but this is really important to absorb. This was published officially by Instagram in 2021, and it still applies today. Let me distill this down for you quickly. So really there are four elements to the algorithm and how it works information about the post itself, so the content you post, information about the person who posted it, so the creator, your activity, finally, your history of interacting with someone. We could also call this relationship. Let's start here, information about the post. So when you post something, Instagram is watching closely to see how popular it is, right? And a good indication of popularity is early engagement. So it's taking a sample size, right? In the first few minutes, let's say, that you post on Instagram, how many people respond to it? How many people ignore it? That's an indication of early engagement and overall popularity. If more people engage early, chances are more of your audience is going to see your content. We also want to think about recency. Instagram is unlikely to serve up content that's three months old, but it will show a post of you this afternoon on your story or maybe a feed post from the last 24 to 48 hours. Finally on this, Instagram is also looking at a little bit more boring information here, different lengths and different content types. I talk a lot about those on my YouTube channel. So that could be single feed or single image posts, rather carousels, which are multiple photos or videos. It could also be a reel or any other form of video content, such as a live that is archived on a, um, on a feed. So that's what it's looking at in terms of information about the post. Let's keep going to this next section. Information about the person who posted it. So we would call this creator. When you like someone's content, you see more of it on Instagram. That is not a fluke. That is not by chance. It is looking at relationships, okay? And we'll talk more about this in a second, but it's looking at information about you. Everything that you do, behavior, everything that you respond to, everything that you ignore even, comes down to information that Instagram is looking at. Now for this next two portions, I'm gonna switch over to my phone because I've got some more visuals for you. From my phone now, I think the Explore page is the best indication of activity. So what you see on this page is based on on what you've interacted, responded well, and engaged with previously, okay? So that includes likes, that includes follows, that includes you just spending more screen time on a particular post. I tend to love graphic type posts. I also love reels with animals, hence this one that's visible. So that's what Instagram is serving me up in the explore page from content by followers that I do not yet follow. Now, when we think finally about your history of interacting with someone, relationship I mentioned, that's the content that appears in your feed, not just feed, that also is stories that are served up along the top. These are people, friends of mine, right? This feed post that's visible is my sister with a animal, uh, with a pet photo. So this is, Instagram's going, we, we watch you, we see who you interact with. It's looking not just you know at likes, but also comments, direct messages, even collaborative posts, right? So this is just a quick little sense of what Instagram is keeping track of, everything. And in the wise words of Adam Mossari, head of Instagram, the algorithm is just a process, definitely something to try and understand, but not be intimidated or discouraged by. So let's keep rocking and talk now about content. Ah, uh, yes, content. Well, there's no doubt that my Instagram skills have definitely approved since July 2011, but it's been, I think, almost a thousand posts since then, and I've gone through so many different phases of content strategy, my feed, right, as I'm looking now back, this is like a trip down memory lane. As I land about here, I really was striving for perfection, right? So I started out with obviously a disorganized visuals very early on. Instagram feed wasn't even a thing when it started, but certainly 
certainly when I look back a few years ago, I cared a lot about how my Instagram feed looked and felt like almost like a mood board. And I'm happy that I've graduated from those days because that was very stifling. It was really tough to maintain this uniform sense of color. Now, right in and about this stage was when I started to experiment with content templates, templates that I've designed for myself to be able to create. While it doesn't look quite as picture perfect, I have repeating themes, templates. You know, I've got tips that reoccur every six posts, tips or reminders. I've got this, which is a nice little carousel that gives me a chance to number something. I've got reels that have got, you know, little recommendations, consistent fonts. I always know just by following a system, a visual system, what is coming, and that enables me to make content creation easy for myself. It takes away the guesswork on how something should look, and instead I plug it into my own system, really, of templates to just, you know, have some clarity on how all of that should look and feel upcoming. I feel a lot more relieved nowadays when I post on my grid because it doesn't need to be perfect, but it should coexist well with my brand. And templates help me create quickly without overthinking it. Let's come back to the branding piece for a moment. There is only one way that I can stay on brand and organized, and that is by having my brand set up under the Brands tab in Adobe Express. You can see here I've got my own brand as well as a few others of clients and brands that I work with. So when I click on here, you'll see my brand colors visible already set once and done. Very easy, upload my logos as well as set my fonts, header and body. And here even, you know, it goes into more detail than you might find in other, you know, browser-based graphic design tools. Like here, pages, video, I can set those light, medium and dark color schemes, which I find really handy. Even branded surfaces, logo, stamp, outro, if I'm working in video or header, footer in a, in a web page. So really handy. This is a template. You saw my Instagram feed a second ago. This is one that I posted very frequently, just text, which make content creation easy and fast. All I have to literally do is pop in a title, some text, duplicate this slide, uh, which you can do easily in Express and just add in some content. I do this on purpose, no fancy visuals, because it means that I can create faster. Here you can see this template in action. If you go over to my feed, you'll see many examples of this template, very intentional, so that I don't waste a lot of time trying to pull fancy visuals, but I just get my idea ideas down quickly, easy to share with my audience. So I made a YouTube video about Instagram updates coming to the platform. And just by going through that process, it made it very easy for me to throw this into a carousel. And this one did actually quite well, really well for me, roughly 90 shares, over 550 saves. Occasionally post, uh, when a post does well, I boost it. So that's a little tip. If you have a post that does exceptionally well and you're wanting to grow in followers, sometimes I'll throw, you know, 10, 15, $20 behind it just to make sure Sure that one of my posts that is performing well organically also helps me grow in followers. Just a little tip. Here's another example of one of my templates in action. Thank you, Adobe Express, for making this easy. I normally go back and duplicate something that I previously designed, modify it quickly, post. This is another example of this in action. So all of this comes from Adobe Express. And by just spending a little bit of time to create these templates and come up with something, it's very easy for me to duplicate, modify, cut down content creation time. I even take templates like this, which started for Instagram and now I use for Pinterest. So this is an example of a pin design. I actually have a few of them here, which I'll flip through very quickly. If you head over to my Pinterest page, you'll see these in action. And honestly, Express makes it it's so easy for me to create assets for Instagram and then resizing them for other platforms like Pinterest, LinkedIn, Facebook, you name it. One more thought on that. You need to be able to create content quickly and I find that the mobile app for Adobe Express is absolutely awesome for that. Let's take a look together. I definitely consider myself more of a desktop guy, but I will say I open the Adobe Express app almost as much as I open it in a browser. And that's pretty rare for me. I love that they just keep it simple. It's really intuitive and easy to follow, but I can still do everything that I need to be able to do, right? So choose and start from a template. Lots of beautiful options here, right there. Instagram posts so I could browse. Beautiful templates, at least to start me off. And then I can apply my brand and content later. Or I can start from scratch, set a custom design here or custom size. and. And also, if I want to select at the bottom, I can select projects. And here I can choose from things that I've designed previously, make it really, really easy to make edits on something that I could have designed in app or on desktop. So I'll click edit. And there we go. I can add slides. I can change colors. I can even add animations. Just the interface 
for an app is really straightforward. It's really actually super impressive being able to apply my brand in a single click there, resize everything that I've ever needed to do that you might think, well, it would be easier to do on desktop is made really super easy in the app. And I absolutely love that. Finally, if I were starting over, I would schedule my content from the onset for a few reasons, including sanction time to engage, which is so important on Instagram, not just creating, but also taking time to engage with others. I am guilty as charged when it comes to spending a lot of time on content creation and maybe not quite enough on engagement. Well, there's always area for improvement. Coming back to this design, which you saw previously posted on my Instagram feed, I would schedule this content in 2020 and beyond, because that's going to give you less time spent on content, right? There's this idea that like when you start a post and if you're just creating one, it takes you time to get in the zone. Then it, you know, it takes time to write the caption, choose your hashtags, post, and then engagement, which is actually really important, becomes an afterthought. And the idea of batch creating or, you know, even batch scheduling, which you can actually do straight from Adobe Express. All I did there was on that post that I want to put out there. I can click the calendar icon and here I can actually choose the social media platforms. Let's say there are multiple that I can go ahead and get that scheduled and posted on. So I've selected Twitter, I've selected Pinterest and LinkedIn. Really easy. Rather than having to go to each platform at a certain time or at a different time, really straightforward. There's my media created in Express. Now I write a caption. I can even add an emoji, a little thumbs up. Here are some important limits to know for Instagram. So that's just an example, right? And so I love that it's breaking down platform specific options. For Pinterest, I would obviously select a board, maybe add a title. If it's a rich pin, I can set a destination link and that would bring people to a certain link for more information on that. Here, I love this. So obviously you set a publishing date if you know when you want it to go out. But I love this. If I select draft post, it means that I can add a draft. And let's say I'm working with a social media team or I've got people helping me with my content creation, they can go in here and add a bunch of drafts and that adds that layer of editing if you want, where right now it's set as a draft, but let's say I make a few edits. This is key to your strategy for 2023, I could go ahead and uncheck that and schedule it at a specific time and day, and that's going to save the changes and that's going to post it out for me. Schedule your social media content. Not only should you be batch creating it, ideally in Adobe Express, but be batch scheduling it so that you have sanctioned uninterrupted time to get back onto that platform and spend time engaging in the DMs with people in your audience, replying to comments, replying to stories, creating community. That is how you're going to grow on Instagram. So that is how I would do it if I was starting all over again. Adobe Express is gonna be a huge help for you, creating content, staying on brand, and even scheduling your post to save time and help you focus on important things like engagement. You don't need to be a graphic designer to create standout content using Adobe Express. That's the beauty of it. Express also has a free plan. I'm linking to it below. So if you've got any other lingering questions, you can put them in the comments and you can try out Adobe Express for yourself. Let's keep the conversation going on down there. I respond to those comments personally. And if you enjoyed this video, give it a like. That helps other people discover these videos, which we work hard to create for you. And subscribe for more of my videos on branding, positioning, building, and promoting your brand. Next, I'm sharing a few videos I think you'll be interested in. I'm Phil Palin. Thanks for watching. Those are coming up next.